pointed out, we can see something quite clearly. We can see a present room. I did make it But we can start to see lots and lots of stars in the sky. So we can start to join the dots together, join the stars together, and even to your imagination, you can start to form pictures in the sky. I'm going to turn the screen to the east. And there's a special group of stars that I want to show you in the east. Like I said, you can join the dots together and start to form pictures. So, Scorpion. <laughs> so this is Scorpius the scorpion. And do you notice when you look at that star there, that's called Antares, but that star there is called the heart of Scorpius. Do you notice it's a different colour? It's red, isn't it? So it's a red giant dying star altogether. Some people see a scorpion. Other people see something else. In Hawaii, they see something that you might know. It's called Maui's hook. If you've watched Moana, you've probably heard of Maui's hook. So that there is what they see. So different people have very different stories about what they see, and different people around the world have a different view of the night sky. So us in Melbourne, this is what we can see. I hear some people yelling that they see the Milky Way. So that white band across the sky is called the Milky Way. That's us looking towards the middle of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. Billions of billions of stars make up the Milky Way galaxy that we call home. Plus lots of planets and rocks and dust and gas, it all makes our galaxy. Chingle, the evil emu in the dark space between the stars. In Chingle, the evil emu, there are lots of stories about it. Some of the stories are about how people were fighting and chasing this emu and all that fighting created the mountains of that stain in a tree so long you become a possum. I'm just going to spin the screen again to the south so you don't have to all... We're looking at south, we're looking at Bunya. There's a special constellation or official group of stars. Or is it? <coughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, it's another one? No, it's not. You can easily form crosses in the sky if you connect four stars together, but the real southern cross is actually where Bunya is. And you can spot it using Alpha and Beta Centauri. The two pointer stars that point towards the tip of the Southern Cross, Proxima Centauri. And that one there, Proxima Centauri, is the closest and a half. Do you notice that I'm directly above south? So it's quite handy when you want to know where you are. So everything that we're seeing in the, the most famous constellations are probably the 12 zodiacs. So we've already talked about Scorpius, but there are 12 different zodiacs, and you see different ones and different colors. But it's not just the zodiacs. If you use your imagination and join the dots together, the night sky, there are 88 official constellations or groups of stars that Western astronomers talk about. We see different ones throughout the night. And this is how astronomers actually divide the sky. So they might be looking at the Leo the lion part of the sky. Or they'll look at the Scorpius part of the sky. So this is how... But I'm going to take you through the night and you'll notice that we see different creatures and different objects, different constellations as we go. Now, if you 
if you're feeling a little bit dizzy with the moving, you might want to shut your eyes for this and I'll let you know once we've stopped moving. Arising in the east and setting in the west, just like our sun does. That's because we're the ones spinning. and lots of lights on. Remember I talked about light pollution? Yeah. We can see all those lights from space. So you can tell from space that there are people living in those cities. And now we're just above the ocean. But there are other signs of intelligent life as well. The orbiting satellites located above Earth. And there are just under 5,000 low orbiting active satellites up there mostly being used to monitor the environment, the atmosphere, and the oceans. Objects that are in low Earth orbit, so hugging the Earth, where all those other green dots are. What's up there? Well, I need to go chase. Here we go. Found it. So that white ball there, that's the International Space Station. No, Dad. Or the ISS. And that orbits about 400 kilometers above the surface of Earth. And there have been astronauts from NASA living on the ISS since the year 2000. <laughs> and it's larger than a five bedroom house, has two bathrooms, a gym, a 360 degree bay window. It sounds very, very lavish. And then I remember that all the astronauts have to sleep upright and struggle to eat. So, yeah. You win some, you lose some. But the ISS orbits the Earth once every 90 minutes. And so the astronauts on it get to see, there it is again. They get to see 16 sunrises every day, which sounds quite beautiful. And getting a little bit further out, 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, we get to the GPS satellites. So the Global Positioning System satellites. And if you ever use G36, 
8,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, we have the geostationary satellites. <coughs> if I change the angle, you might be able to tell they orbit Earth around the equator, like a little ring. So they're called geostationary because they take 24 hours to go around the Earth once. And hang on, 24 hours, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? It also takes 24 hours for the Earth to spin once. So what that means is that if you stood outside and looked up and could see one of those satellites, it would look like it's not moving above you because it's above the same spot always. They move at the same rate as we do. So about 385,000 kilometers away, which is one light second from Earth. And we call it a light second because it takes one second. But pulling away even further. Here are the four rocky inner planets. So if I move up, we can see Mercury. Venus, Earth, and Mars. As the solar system formed, all the dense matter <coughs> were inside the asteroid belt. There are over 1 million known asteroids and 37,000, uh, 3,700 known comets, but there are actually probably millions more. But you know what? If you added the mass of all of these bits of rock and dust in the asteroid belt, they wouldn't even equate to the mass of the moon. So all these bits are tiny. And though, although it doesn't seem like it, most of the asteroid belt is just empty space because the distance between each object is so large. So it's actually not really like in the movies, you know, in sci-fi movies, and they all have to dodge between all the asteroids. Ah, bump it above asteroid. We'll get there, we'll get there. So now we can see the outer planets of the solar system too and from here you can start to see how far apart the planets are. So we've got Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune but they're so spread out compared to the four inner planets that seem to sort of just be hugging the sun in comparison. so far away, Neptune is four light hours away. So that means it takes four hours for light to reach us from Neptune. And you want a very flat plane. They're all sort of in a line. You asked, what about Pluto? I'm going to show you Pluto and its orbit. That's a little bit wonky, isn't it? It's a bit different. So now you can maybe see one of the reasons why Pluto was demoted as a planet. So its orbit doesn't quite fit in with all the other planets. So that's just one of thousands of icy bodies that are bigger than 100 kilometers. And then probably an estimated trillion more planets in the Kuiper Belt. You want to come and ask me your question at the end? Sounds like a good way of doing it. So to reach the edge of the solar system, we keep in. Still within our solar system, this is a sphere of distant until the sun just becomes one of the many, many stars out there. So we're now more than a light year away. And a light year equates to about 10 trillion kilometers. And remember those constellations and how we join them together. So you can see Scorpion up there. Scorpius. Because the only thing that links these stars together was our perception. They kind of look a little bit alien now, so I'll turn that off. But speaking of alien, are we alone out there? Who knows? But these blue circles 
show you the stars that have an exoplanet, at least one exoplanet. So an exoplanet is just a planet outside of our solar system. And it's thought that our sun is one, one of the 100 to 400 billion stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. That beautiful barred spiral galaxy with older yellow stars at the center and young bright blue stars in the spiraled arms. So those spiraled arms are spent essentially the um, star forming factories of the galaxy. And that Milky Way band across the sky, that's us looking towards the middle. We can't quite see the middle, but we can look towards it. The galaxy is about 100,000 light years across, and we are 26. Do they? They're kind of just like fuzzy, fuzzy patches. And that's because they're literally being torn apart. We are now looking at 30,000 galaxies that make up a sample of sort of the nearby galaxies to us. This image was produced by Fred Kelly in 1988. And each of these dots is now. So this little bow tie shape is showing us galaxies from an Australian survey called the 2DF Galaxy Redshift Survey and that was made using the Anglo Australian Telescope in northern New South Wales. So this is Australia's contribution to what we know. Sky and then in the UK they looked at the northern parts of the sky so we started to fill in some of the gaps but look at that. There's still so much we don't know. That empty space where we just don't know what's there. The power of super massive black holes. So we're light in the universe. It's the cosmic microwave background. So this is a glow that fills the entire universe as a remnant of the Big Bang from a time when the traveling through the universe like this is that it can make you feel a little insignificant thinking about how tiny we are compared to the entire scale of the universe. But as Carl Sagan, a famous astronomer once said, astronomy is a humbling and character building experience. <laughs> so after all this, you might think that you might not matter, but I am here to tell you that you do matter because you are matter. <laughs> we and everything around us is made of stardust because of all the elements, the elements. So I just want to end on a quote that I really like from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Space is big. You won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemist, but that's just peanuts compared to space.